Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to we'll get started singing. We've turned to Victory in Jesus. It's number 413. In the 12th edition, it's 421. <clears throat> 413 and 421. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood's atoning Selection, unless there's another request. Uh, Jesus, thou art the sinner's friend. It's 414 and 422. <clears throat> 414 and 422. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
right, <clears throat> we had a phone ringing, sorry about that. <clears throat> 414 and 422. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the Lord, the Savior, has friend, as a child unto for When Sorrows Encompass Me Round, which is number uh, 331 in the 12th edition. That's, that's 339 in the 11th edition, as far as I can tell. 339 and 331. <clears throat> <clears throat> 339 and 331. <clears throat> when sorrows and compass me round.
Okay. They tell me there's not another request, so we'll we'll sing Lord I'm unworthy. It's four fifteen and four fifty one in the twelfth edition. <clears throat> four fifteen and four fifty one. <clears throat> Jesus, my Savior, I'm coming right now. Humbly before thee, this small but I bow. Praying forgive me for wrongs I have done. Lord, I'm unworthy to be called thy son. Lord, I'm unworthy to be called thy son. Years I have wasted, so long said and done. Waiting, repenting, a beggar I come. Lord, am I worthy to be called thy son? How is I'm doing that which I not do? Okay, thank you very much, Brother Kevin. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, uh, worship service this evening. I hope and trust that, uh, first and foremost, that everyone's been praying for our time together, that we've uh, sought God's favor in our meeting, uh, that we would uh, feel his presence and be stirred up uh, in the spirit concerning spiritual things, uh, the gospel truths in which we uh, rejoice in. Uh, the song that we just sang, Lord, I'm unworthy. <clears throat> I was reading the Psalm 67. It says, God, be merciful to us and bless us. We depend upon God's mercies and grace because we are unworthy. Uh, we're thankful that we have been saved by grace and not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, and we're just thankful for the mercies of God, uh, which endureth forever. We'd like to welcome each one of you. We um, as we come to meet this night, we have uh, many that we would like to try and remember in prayer. Uh, we certainly are thankful uh, for the uh, visitation, our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to see Elder Oots with us. We hope and trust that uh, he continues to do well. Uh, we have been in uh, we diligent prayer that the uh, mass on his kidneys would uh, remain the same or get smaller or just uh, uh, disappear. God would heal him up. Uh, and we would uh, 
wonder not at that miracle, but just rejoice in what God has done. Um, so as we meet tonight, we uh, want to remember a few, if, uh, if the Lord would bless us to recall them to our mind. Um, we continue to be in prayer and remember Brother Gene and Sister Virginia, Sister Jewel, Sister Ruth and her brother Robert. Um, Sister Wanda is at home. We mentioned Sunday. We continue to be in prayer for her. I ask the Lord's continued blessings upon her. Uh, Dwayne has had his surgery. Uh, so we, we ask the Lord to bless him in recovery, that he was strengthened. Uh, Dwayne and all of his family and Sister Wanda, as he recovers to a uh, a good health according to the power and the might and the will of God. So be in prayer for Sister Wanda's family. Uh, Karen Smith and Teresa Long continue to be in prayer for them. Uh, Daryl Klutz and Clyde Pickler, we ask the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Uh, Tim's co-worker, we want to remember her and all that she has uh, is doing with her family. Uh, Kenzie Hallman, uh, the little girl that had the brain surgery has got to go back to the doctor they're having some complications with the incision, so we pray the Lord's blessing in that regard. Um, Brother Ned's good to see him tonight. Continue to pray for Brother Ned. Pray the Lord's blessing upon him. All those that have recently lost loved ones, uh, we continue to try to remember Brother Brad and Brother Josh, Sister Cassie, and their upcoming wedding, as well as Sister Hannah and Sister Casey and their upcoming delivery. Um, Brother Tim, we want to remember Brother Tim Heron. Uh, he tested positive for COVID uh, today, so we pray uh, the Lord's blessing upon him that it would be mild and swift and just contained to him and it wouldn't uh, get anywhere else in his household. So we'll be praying for the Heron family in that regard. Uh, a few from No Creek, uh, Sister Merlin, uh, Mary Catherine and Carol, uh, Sister Gay Dunn is having more uh, problems with her sciatica nerve. She has some upcoming surgery scheduled for that. We want to pray, pray for that. Uh, Sister Bennett, I'll be in prayer for her as well. Uh, my friend Wendy Howell mentioned her again at the loss, sudden loss of her husband. Pray the Lord's comforting uh, power upon that family. Uh, Elder Jimmy Booth and uh, Brother Hunter Cox, Elder Cato, Sister Vicki, uh, and we mentioned Elder Oots. Uh, Brother um, Gary, I know that there's a few more up there that I, I can't recall to mind that uh, you've mentioned in, uh, before. Is there anyone else you'd like to mention? Everybody seems to be doing pretty good. You've covered most of them, Brother Eddie. Uh, and uh, Brother Jimmy Booth, I did get a word today from Brother Joe that Brother Jimmy uh, is going to be getting home and going to be having rehab at his house, which we're thankful to hear about that. And also little uh, sister Kat Dalton um, there in West Virginia. Um, she's going to be getting home as well, having rehab. So that was good news from both of them. All right. Thank you, Brother Gary. I, I do want to mention another uh, acquaintance, uh, Andrew May, which is the uh, husband of a teacher uh, where I work. Uh, he's a disabled veteran and he, he's in Texas. They're both in Texas. Uh, he is going to have an uh, amputation from the knee down on one of his legs, and uh, he'll be there for six months in Texas. And we hope and trust that uh, the Lord would bless uh, that operation and recovery uh, for Andrew May. Uh, of course, we want to remember uh, our churches uh, that's represented here tonight and all the, the faithful churches that stand for the truth. We pray the Lord's a double portion of his grace and mercy upon them uh, that we would continue to uh, to worship in spirit and in truth and to, uh, to worship in truth. And I believe that's honoring and that's glorifying to God when we come and uh, express the truth as it's given to us in the scripture. So we ask the Lord's continued wisdom upon us. Uh, so bless our churches. Of course, our country, we ask the Lord to bless us with uh, peace uh, as much as he can, as much as we can. Um, bless our leaders, our military, our first responders, just pray the Lord's blessing uh, in that regard for his mercy and grace upon us. We ask the Lord's mercy and grace upon the church. Um, we know that hey, we can look at the world and say, well, they, they need mercy and grace. But when we look at the church, we, we need mercy and grace as well. And I'm thankful that the Lord has loved the people, uh, that he would let his 
countenance shine upon him, his face shine upon them, and they would just feel uh, the fellowship uh, with, with God Almighty. Uh, what encouragement that is from day to day. Does anyone have anyone else that they'd like to mention? Uh, Elder Eddie, um, I keep forgetting to mention, um, but we want to pray for the Crump family. Um, the two brothers, um, Brandon and Brian, they're my co-workers, um, but their father uh, is in the uh, hospital. He's in the critical care on a ventilator with COVID, um, but he's a double amputee um, from diabetes, so he's a high risk, so we want to pray for them and um, that family. Okay, uh, Brother Caleb, uh, he is in the critical care, double amputee with uh, COVID, so we want to remember the Crump family. Any, anyone else? Uh, well, we'd like to continue on with our worship service. We're going to ask Elder Utz to uh, preach for us this evening. Uh, we're thankful for his visitation. Uh, we know that he doesn't come seeking time to promote himself. But we pray to the Lord when he's called on to speak that he'll promote the gospel and the goodness of the God uh, shines upon his people like he has done in the past. And we're going to ask uh, Brother Gene Heron if he would open service with a prayer. Uh, Brother Kevin, what number do you have for us? Brother Eddie, we're going to sing Blessed, Blessed Jesus Be We Sing. It's number 401, and in the 12th edition, it's 409. 401 and 409. Blessed Jesus, did we sing that the life eternal spring thou art worthy, thou alone, thou the rock and cornerstone. Tis from thee. Evening, Brother James. Good to see you tonight. We hope and trust that you're well, and we pray the Lord's blessing upon you in prayer. Please bow with us. Our great eternal Heavenly Father, as we come before thee tonight, we thank thee, Lord, for this privilege and opportunity of meeting a portion of the Lord's people. We thank thee, Lord, that thou hast been with us and watched over us all the many days of our lives. We thank thee, Lord, for this nation that we live in. We believe one of the most blessed nations in the world. We pray for those that are in authority over us, Lord, that thou would guide their thoughts and their minds, that they might make decisions that would be pleasing in thy sight. There's been so many called out tonight that stands in need of prayer. We remember my cousin that uh, 
I mentioned to Brother Eddie earlier that has cancer of the blood. He's been through 14 chemo treatments and, and is now in the nursing home trying to recuperate, watch over him and bless him and pray especially also for Elder Oots, Lord, that this spot that's on his kidney that he might be healed. We pray for him tonight, Lord, as he speaks to thy old children. Give him the liberty of his calling, Lord, that he might be able to proclaim those things that would be edifying to thy old children. Lord, continue to watch over us and bless us through this service and throughout this coming week. In Jesus' blessed and holy name, we ask it all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gene. Good evening, Elder Oos. It certainly is good to see you. Uh, we will continue to be in prayer for you. We hope you and your family are well. We pray the Lord's blessing upon you as you come and Speak before the Lord's people. God bless you, Brother Gary. Need your prayers, Brother Eddie, and certainly appreciate that prayer, Brother Gene, and appreciate just the opportunity to gather with you tonight uh, to worship the Lord and to lift up our voices in praise to the great God of heaven who has done such wonderful things for us. We could never thank him enough for his goodness and his mercy and his grace that has been showered down upon us all the days of our lives, even the part of our life that we were not mindful of him at all, thinking about him at all, uh, the Lord's purpose and the Lord's watch care and the Lord's um, has been with us through all of the storms and all of the trials and all of the problems and things that we didn't even know were going on around us that would have surely probably taken our very life the Lord has been right there. And then wonderful tonight to know that uh, that's the faithful God that we serve, that our salvation is not in us and it's not in any man or any group of men or any political body or, or anywhere else, but it's in the Lord who cannot fail, who knows all things and is able to do above anything we can ask or think, whatever our needs are tonight. And I know our needs are great. I'm sorry to see Brother Tim separated there from his family, kind of, and I pray that the Lord would just be with, with you all there and all that situation. And I know it, I know it's in the Lord's hands, and that's a great comfort for us, no matter what storm we're going through, to know that the Lord uh, knows all about it and that he is providing for us, even at times when we don't understand it and we don't, we don't, uh, we don't grasp all that he's doing. We can be settled that we have a merciful and gracious and a loving God uh, who's taking care of us uh, as his dear little children. And he will provide just what we need. May the Lord bless us tonight to talk about that a little bit and also remember it and think about it. And may it stir us up to be able to face the the days that are ahead of us uh, in a way that's more pleasing unto the Lord, where it honors him and it glorifies him. The Bible tells us that it pleases God when his children bring forth fruit. And uh, I just pray that he'll bless us to do that, that we might uh, be rooted and grounded in faith and love, that we would have the love of God in our hearts and our trust and our dependence would be more upon the Lord. And there's nothing that can stir us up in this world, like the gospel, uh, to, to allow us to see that better. Uh, when you preach the gospel and you declare the gospel, you don't make the truth the truth. Uh, the truth is already the truth. Uh, the gospel is a declaration. The gospel declares the truth that is. We don't cause salvation to happen. We declare how salvation has taken what, how salvation, where salvation is from, how it's taken place, who it's in. We declare the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a salvation. 
that we enjoy in hearing that and enjoying that and, and, and embracing that. But it's a declaration of a salvation that, that is sure and cannot fail because it's built upon the counsel of God and the word of God, the promises of God, and upon those two things. Uh, and it's impossible for God to lie. We can, we can have trust and dependence tonight upon uh, what the Lord has told us and the, the decrees of God, the counsel of God's going to stand. Uh, what a, what a mighty God we have to serve tonight. If I have a text on my mind, it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if you have your Bibles and like to turn with me there, I certainly encourage you to do that. The Apostle Paul here writing, and he's writing unto the church at Corinth. And he's writing to them who are sanctified, to them uh, in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So he's not only writing to the church here at Corinth, but he's writing to God's people that have been set apart by the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that tells me he's writing to us. He's, he's given this to us. It's part of the uh, all scripture that's given by inspiration of God that's profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And it's wonderful tonight when we can open the Bible and read it and understand that this is a message not just written to people a long time ago, but it's written to us tonight as God's dear little children. He says in the first verse of 1 Corinthians 15, beginning there, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, and then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was, was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection? of the dead. I'm thankful tonight that there is a resurrection of the dead, aren't you? I'm thankful tonight that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life in our room instead, did not remain in that grave, but on that, uh, after that third day, came forth victorious from that grave and walked here in the shores of time and was manifested to, to his brethren, and then ascended back on high, and tonight is seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. We can have that assurance from the Word of God and for what the Bible teaches us. And the Apostle Paul here talks about how he declared unto them the gospel, and that was his desire to preach and to declare the gospel. We see that over and over where the Apostle Paul is speaking about that. He told the brethren in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 uh, in verse 17 uh, that there were many divisions among them. He went on and he said, but for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. 
The gospel is the power of God. Uh, we read over in the book of Romans, uh, in chapter 1 of Romans 1, Paul says he was a debtor. He said in verse 14, he says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are, that are at Rome also. And he says, the gospel, not a gospel, but the gospel. The apostle Paul warned them that there were other gospels that were not gospels. There were other messages. There were, other, uh, there were others that were teaching other things in this world. And he warned us not to stray from the gospel. Not to stray or swerve from the gospel, but to but be sure we're declaring the gospel, not a gospel, but the gospel. He goes on in the Galatian letter and tells us that this these other gospels are not really gospels. He said in the Galatian letter in chapter one, he said, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who hath raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. He goes on and gives us a brief synopsis of the gospel. He says, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Now this might is not maybe he will or maybe he won't. It tells us how we will be delivered from this evil world. And that is that he gave himself, the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself. He gave himself. He, 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 God was manifest in the flesh. The word of God, who was with God in the beginning, who verily was God. He, he came in a body of flesh and was made like unto us. Not 50-50 man and 50-50 God, but 100% God and 100% uh, man. He was a perfect man, a man without sin, a man without spot, a man without blemish. And he came as a man and offered himself once unto God, a perfect sacrifice for the sin of his people. And he paid the sin debt. He gave himself for our sins. He didn't try to do that. He didn't hope to do that. He didn't make an effort to do that. He wasn't trying to save everybody from all of the sins that everybody had ever committed. He came to save his people from their sins. That was the very message of the angel uh, unto uh, Joseph, uh, that uh, uh, thou, uh, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. She shall bring forth a child, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and for he shall save his people from their sins. Aren't you thankful tonight the gospel is not an invitation, but it's a declaration. It is to declare to God's children what Jesus came to do, what he accomplished, what he finished, not what he wanted to do, not what he tried to do, not what he hoped to do, but what he came to do, and that which he came to do, he accomplished, and he finished it. And tonight we are to declare that to God's little children. And it's a joyful sound. It's good news from a far country. It's like cold water to a thirsty soul. The, the wise man Solomon tells, that us, tells us that in Proverbs 25, 25. Uh, and it says, cold water to a thirsty soul to hear. And that one who sees themselves that we have, have, have sang tonight uh, and thought about it, uh, Jesus is the sinner's friend. Jesus is the one who's come to us when we could not help ourselves and could not do anything for ourselves and has reached us in the place no one else could reach us and has supplied for us no, something no one else could supply. And again, he didn't try to do it. He didn't want to do it. He finished it. The apostle Paul for said we're not to add to that a gospel in any way. He went on, he said he gave himself for our sins and that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. He came to fulfill the will of, of the Father. He said he came down from heaven not to do his own will, but the will of him that sent me. And he goes on and tells us there in John 6 what that will is. Uh, he came down to do the will of the Father which sent me, and this is the Father's will which he has sent me, that of all that he had given me, he wouldn't lose a few 
few. He wouldn't lose one or two. He said, of all that he'd give me, I should lose nothing. And he's coming and he, and he said, and I shall raise it up again at the last day. Listen, he didn't lose their soul. He didn't lose their spirit. He didn't lose their body. Uh, that is why the doctrine of the resurrection is so vitally important for us to understand and embrace tonight. And surely I uh, want peace you and I can have about that. Because if in Jesus' resurrection, our resurrection is assured. We believe that tonight, don't we? The resurrection of whom? Every one of God's little children. They'll be raised again. Uh, just as our Lord came forth in a glorified body, we'll be raised in his likeness. We'll be made in fashion like unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll be satisfied one sweet day in glory. And all of this is part of the gospel. And the apostle Paul said, I want to declare it to you. He said, though you've heard it before, Though you've received it, know you stand in it. Again tonight, I declare it unto you. He said, moreover, that means I'm going further. Furthermore, I want to declare unto you of all the things I've laid out. First of all, this is most important and most essential, that Jesus came to save sinners from their sins, and he did just what he came to do. He didn't try to do it. He didn't want to do it. He did it. He finished it, and he accomplished it. And we can say amen. And thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy that has been shown unto us. He said to these Galatian brethren, because there had been some Judaizers that had moved in and began preaching the doctrine of circumcision and trying to add to grace some work, some, some other thing. And listen, this world are filled with men coming in, trying to creep in and adding something to grace. Uh, whether it be some, some effort on man's part in believing or some action on man's part or any other thing, uh, they want to add to that, 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 uh, that work of grace that was done by our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and when they do that, uh, they leave the gospel and they have a gospel that's not a gospel. He goes on and he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And you know, tonight, I think it would be a strange thing for, to leave the things that I've loved now and enjoyed so much. What a blessing the gospel of grace has been to this boy down through the years. I remember a time in my young, younger life uh, when I did not understand the things uh, of the gospel like I do tonight. And I don't see it all tonight by any means or stretch of the imagination. I'm still a boy. I'm still learning. I'm still but a babe. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you, I love milk today just as good as I ever did. Uh, and I love to sit down and feed on the milk of the gospel. It's like good news. It, 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 it satisfies my appetite. Uh, and yet I am thankful from time to time to be able to take a little bit of meat along the way uh, and to get the instruction that comes all the way from God's word. Uh, but I surely don't want to leave or abandon uh, the plain, simple truth of salvation by grace and grace alone. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. When we would add anything to the gospel, when we would say it's duty, it's man's duty, to do this, or man's uh, responsibility to do that in order to save himself or in order to get saved eternally. Now, yes, there are some timely aspects of salvation that we surely know duty is a part of. There are some responsibilities that we have as God's little children, and the Apostle Paul does address that. Uh, but all thanks be to God tonight that we are depending upon the grace that flows from Almighty God down to us to even give us the ability to walk in a way that's pleasing unto Almighty God here in this world. If we abandon grace, we just, well, we just dump the whole thing. You know, I remember hearing a whole lot of truth in my earlier years, but it'd be like I heard a man say one time, it's like a, a milk in a cow and you get a good bucket of milk uh, and you get everything just about the way it is. And before you can get a good drink of it, uh, the, either the cow to kick kicks the bucket over or something else is done to it. And I've heard so much preaching at times in this world where men would lay out things. And then at the very end of it, uh, they kick the bucket over. Uh, they put man into some part of it and have man doing something that applies the things to him as if God can't accomplish it without man doing his part. 
Oh, I'm thankful tonight that we have a God who works his will among the army in heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. And there is none that can stay his hand or say, what doest thou? And when he sent his His darling son, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ here into this world. He didn't send one who might fail or fall short in any way, but he sent uh, him. Uh, God he was made manifest in the flesh and, and he walked perfectly, a perfect life. And when he went to the cross, he knew exactly who he was dying for. He knew his people, foreknew them even before the foundation of the world. They were chosen in him. He knew every sin they'd ever commit, every lie that they would ever tell, every bit of unbelief in them, everything that would have separated us from him through it forever and ever. He knowing them all, uh, Jesus took those sins in his own precious body and there at Calvary, he removed them from us as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against us anymore. Tonight, we're just here to talk about it again and tell you how great things the Lord has done for his people. And it ought to cause us to be stirred up. You know, some people would say, well, if that's what I believe, then uh, that would tell people just to go live any old way and act any old way and talk any old way and just do any old thing. I'm telling you, when you understand how much the Lord has loved us, that he sent his very darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ here in this world, and it was my sins that nailed him to the tree of the cross. It was my sins uh, that drove the nails in his hands and in his feet. It was my sins that placed the crown of thorns upon his head. It was my sins that ripped open his back and the blood that flowed in Calvary. It was because of my sins. It's not, uh, we're not speculating about that. That's part of the gospel that he tells us that. And for me to add anything to that, and say anything else would bring salvation to us uh, would be to take away from the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And would do, it would bring dishonor. It would dishonor our Lord. I'm thankful tonight that our salvation is in him and him alone. And that he knew exactly who he was dying for. He knew every sin that we would ever commit. And in spite of all that, listen, he loved us anyway. If that doesn't cause you to want to walk better and to live better and talk better, I don't know what would. If that doesn't cause you to want to say uh, the right thing when it's time to talk and to keep our mouth closed and to be kind and to love one another and to walk in a way to bring honor and glory unto the Lord because our sins uh, had to be paid for. And every one of our sins uh, caused him to ache and suffer uh, on the cross. And not only from what he did physically uh, that man put upon him, but even the Lord, uh, it pleased God the Father to bruise his only begotten son. We read about that as, as he tells us that according to the scripture over in Isaiah 53, it says this, surely he hath borne our griefs. Who is that? That's God's people. That's not everybody in the world and hopes to get somebody. No, that's God's people that he chose in covenant before the foundation of the world that he foreknew. Those are the ones that he justified. Those are the ones that he paid the price for. Surely he had borne, borne our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Mankind looked upon him as a failure and, and our eye tonight would see him as a failure. Our ear would see him as a, would hear him as a failure and our heart would not understand. But we know differently tonight, don't we? We know that our Lord was not a failure. Our, our eye can see it and our ear can hear it and our heart can understand it. Did we get so smart on our own? Did we figure all this out? I said to you, no, a thousand times no, because we were just as much in the dark as anyone else. But if we can understand this tonight, great is the mystery of godliness. If you can understand this tonight, it's because God has revealed it unto you, uh, unto you by his spirit. And he tells us that over in 1 Corinthians also, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Tonight, you and I are talking about deep things. We're talking about things that are hidden from the wise and prudent and revealed unto babes. 
You know, we've heard it so many times. Many of us sometimes might grow a little cold. I'll tell you, we just need to hear grace more. Uh, we don't need to hear less grace. We need to hear more grace. Yes, duty is important, but you have to have grace in order to walk in duty. Uh, yes, there is obedience that's required of us because much has been given to us. And when much is given, he said, there's much required. But I'll tell you, we can't do anything without the grace of Almighty God giving us the will and the ability. And it's God who has worked in us both too willing to do of his good pleasure so that we need his grace. We can't leave or abandon grace. We need to be built up and strengthened in grace. We need to be stirred up. We need to remember it. We need to tell one another over and over. I had a dear brother talking to me the last night on the phone, and we were talking about the things of the Lord. It just caused me to, uh, to rejoice. I had a particular passage of scripture that kind of popped in my mind, and, and I don't believe it just popped in my mind for a moment. Do you? I believe the Lord just gave us a little uh, a passage of scripture, and we were able to talk about that, that for a little while, and the conversation was going good, and then all of a sudden, we brought up some polit politics, and I'll tell you what, it wasn't, wasn't long that the conversation kind of went another direction, kind of went another way. You know what? And I did. it doesn't mean we disagreed. It just means we were talking about things that weren't very important. <laughs> it means we weren't using the time in a quality way. We were wasting time. I think the brother told me that. He said, we're wasting time now. And I had to say, amen. Yes, we're wasting time. I don't believe tonight's a waste of time. Do you? I don't believe gathering here and singing about Jesus Christ is a waste of time. I don't believe opening our Bibles and reading it's a waste of time. I don't believe bowing our heads and praying to God is a waste of time. As a matter of fact, I believe we're redeeming the time. I believe we're using the time in a wise way and, and being uh, and walking in a way that's pleasing unto our Lord because we're talking about him. I believe we're doing some of the things we're going to be doing in heaven. I don't know what heaven's going to be all about, but I know there's praise and worship that's going to go on in glory, and it's not going to be in the weak way we do it down here. Oh, but I am so thankful that we have been blessed by the grace and the mercy of God from time to time to gather in sweet little places like this and talk about the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God and to hear about salvation by grace one more time so that I might remember it a little better, uh, that I won't leave out tomorrow and get downcast and overwhelmed by this world, but I'll be lifted up on that solid rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, and be able to trust in him and lean upon him, the one who's been so good to me all the days of my life. He said, he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And he went on and he said, for though we are an angel from heaven. And when he said we, he's talking about himself and he's talking about all the brethren that were with him. And I say to you, he's talking about all of us. If any of us are an angel from heaven would preach any other gospel, any other gospel than the gospel of God's grace, he said, other than that, he said unto you, then that which ye have re we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And that is to be cut off from the fellowship. And we're not to have any other gospel. That's why it's important that we listen carefully when the brethren come before us that they're preaching the gospel, not adding to it, not taking from it, but preaching it in, as, as it's laid down in God's word. And oh, that's one concern I have. Anytime I come before the Lord's people, I pray, oh Lord, bless me to rightly divide the word of truth and not add to thy word or take from it, but to, to preach it in a way that'll be beneficial and that it would feed and edify as brother uh, as Brother Gene mentioned in his prayer, that it might edify God's little lambs and God's little sheep. And I'll tell you, the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will feed his little lambs and feed his sheep. Those that feel brokenhearted and lost and undone and feel like there's no hope for me. I've talked to so many of God's little children, and I've been there myself, who feel like there's no hope for a sinner like me. 
that I'm so far away, there's no way I could be uh, any part of anything that's right or good in this world. And yet the Lord reached down from heaven into the dung hills of this earth and, and, and reached and, and touched his little children and picked them up and put their feet upon a rock and put a new song in their mouth, even praises unto our God. Uh, great is the mystery of godliness of what the Lord has done for us in sending himself. God was manifest in the flesh. Uh, and the Spirit had, uh, pointed out that Jesus was everything uh, that he was, uh, and, he, and, and uh, the angels declared it, uh, and it's been preached in the world and preached unto the Gentiles and believed on into the, in the world. And tonight, we're enjoying these blessings because of God's wonderful blessings and grace that's been showered down upon us. He said, for do I now persuade men I'll go verse 9 of Galatians 1. He says, as we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than which then that ye have received. Here he says, I preached it unto you and you received it. He said, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. He said, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of, of, of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, he clearly lays out what that gospel is here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Now, how does the gospel save us? Does the gospel get us to heaven in immortal glory? No. No, I'll tell you, the, the Lord loved his people in covenant before the foundation of the world. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Moreover, those whom he predestinated, them he also called. God will effectually call by the power of the Holy Spirit every one of his little children that he foreknew, he foreloved before the foundation of the world. And those whom he called, every one of them, them he also justified. That means he made them just as if they had not sinned. He paid the sin debt for them. He washed them in his own blood. And they, are, they, they stand in, a, in, a, in an everlasting sense uh, uh, before Almighty God, washed in the blood of, of the Lamb, made accepted in the beloved. Their sins have been removed from, from them. Uh, and, and that is uh, the work of Almighty God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those whom he justified, them he also glorified. And that means every one of them that were in the beginning of this will be in the end of this. They'll be with him, a body, soul, and spirit forever to be with the Lord. And it's as good as done. But there is a timely deliverance that comes in the gospel. And we have found that in our lives. Thank the Lord. There's a peace and a rest that comes in understanding what Jesus has done for you and not trusting in yourself for your righteousness, and not depending upon your works or anything that you have done, but rather trusting completely by faith in what Jesus has done. Who is it that's able to do that? It's only God's children that have already been born again, already been bought and paid for, already secured for heaven. It's God's little children that have been, that work of grace has taken place in their heart and they've been given faith and enabled to believe. Uh, and when they do believe and trust in him, they have a timely uh, a deliverance uh, right here in this world. Uh, they are saved and delivered uh, from the, from the, uh, the worry and the heartache that comes when you think you're going to be cast away from the Lord. Isn't it, doesn't it give you peace when you hear the gospel proclaimed? Doesn't it give you peace to rest in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is that not a deliverance? I'll tell you, it surely has been a deliverance for me over the years. He says, which by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Sometimes we can think maybe it's not for me. Maybe he didn't do it for me. Maybe I'm, I'm not his. 
And all the sweet message of the gospel comes and tells us uh, that uh, though we feel so far away from him, we're not outside of the reach of our our darling Savior, that our Savior uh, left the 99 in the safety of the fold and went and gathered the one little lamb and the one little sheep and put him up on his uh, on his shoulder and carried him back. Uh, listen, when he came to save his people, he didn't come to save some of them. He came and saved all of them, and none of them will he lose. And when we come, die and face that time where we leave this world, we're not sitting there trusting on how how sincere I was in my confession, how sincere I was in my baptism. Oh, we ought to be sincere. We, I'm not saying don't be sincere, but I'm saying our salvation is not in what we've done for him. Hear this. It's in what he has done for us. We can leave this world in peace and rest knowing that though I've messed up again and again, my Savior never did mess up and never will mess up, and my salvation is in him. And if I don't remember that, then I can lose that peace and that rest. He says, for I delivered, and here he gives us uh, the gospel. He says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. When I read that, I just like to say that settles it. <laughs> that settles it. He says, how that Christ died. Christ died for what? For our sins. What did Christ die for? Our sins. Who is the our sins? That's his people. How many of their sins? All of them. Christ died for our sins. So how many of our sins will we be held and, and, and how many of our sins will we have to answer for? Listen, if we are among the hour, Christ died for our sins. Not one of those sins can be brought to our charge because Christ has already died for it and paid for it. And it, it cannot be again brought up. Who can bring us under condemnation? It, he is the one who has already died for us. He died for our sins. He paid the price. And whether we accept that or whether we reject that, it doesn't change the fact and the reality that he died for our sins. But it sure does affect how we feel. It sure does affect that timely deliverance. It sure does affect our conscience. It sure does affect how we feel about things in this world. A little child of grace, I would want you tonight to trust in Jesus. Trust in him and him alone. Lean upon him and him alone, knowing that he has finished that work and trust in his finished work. And not that we can add to that in any way or do anything to make it more sure. Uh, and the ideas and the thoughts of the world that say you've got to do this or do that to make that benefit uh, uh, effectual to you uh, is doing just what the Apostle Paul said in the, in the book of Galatians that we were not to do. He goes on, he says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Isaiah 53, I've been kind of jumping all over the place, but it's all right. Isaiah 53, I encourage you to re read it. He, he was wounded for our transgressions, verse 5. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Does that sound like anything there he didn't get done? Anything there he failed to do? No. He says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We've messed up all the time. He says, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Who's the us all? That's his people. And he goes on in verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Jesus' soul was made an offering for sin. And he shall see his seed. He saw his people. He shall prolong his days. Uh, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Jesus says it is finished. He finished the work that the Father gave him to do. And all he and 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 on that third revolving morning he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that and then the evidence is there that he was seen of Cephas. Uh, he was seen of Peter, then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part 
uh, uh, remain until this present, but some are fallen asleep. That is a wonderful thought to think what it means when you die as a little child of grace. You simply fall asleep. Now, what goes asleep? The spirit doesn't go to sleep, and the, and the soul doesn't go to sleep, but the body goes to sleep. The soul and the spirit immediately are carried into the very presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the, and the, and the body... Uh, the body is awaiting the morning of the resurrection. It's asleep, but it's not going to remain asleep. The reason it's not going to be remaining asleep is because we have a resurrected Savior. And just as sure as his resurrection took place, we can be assured that the resurrection of God's little children is going to take place, that all of them will be brought forth from the grave. He won't miss one of them, not one of their bodies, not, not any part of them. And, and all of his children, even those that are alive and remain, are going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And we'll be with him, meet the Lord in the air, and forever be with the Lord. And we can be assured of that because there's an empty grave to prove. Jesus came forth victorious from the grave. Had he failed in one degree, in one, in one step, in one part, if he had not dotted every I and crossed every T, uh, he would have never come forth out of the grave. But he came forth out of the grave victorious. And we have that sign and that surety. An empty tomb proves uh, that we have a Savior in heaven uh, who saved his people from their sins. He said, after that, he was seen of James and of all the apostles. And last of all, the apostle Paul says he was seen of me also as the one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle. That's the spirit that ought to be in each and every one of us as God's little children. We ought to look at ourselves and just recognize what we are by nature. And say, oh, thank God for the grace, the wonderful grace of God, the mercy of God, that he would have love and, and show mercy to, to, to such as we are. Uh, and as we come together feeling to be the least among God's children, you know, we are a benefit to God's children when we're there. We're at our brethren's feet, and we are, we're at the feet of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're looking to him for just what we need. And you know, he can give us the wisdom that we need. He can give us the strength that we need. He can give us the health that we need. He can give us the sight that we need. He can give us anything that we stand in need of. He is our shepherd. We can say with David, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's the great shepherd that we have. He said, I'm the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. The apostle Paul thought about all the things that he has done wrong. And I know he grieved over it. And there are many times I'm sure you and I think about all the things we've done. I think of, I think of things I've said I wish I'd have never said. I think, I think of thoughts that I've had that I wish I could never have had them. I think of things I should have said that I, should, that I, that I didn't say. So many things in the past. And it can be overwhelming if you sit there and just think about that. But I want you to know we have a Savior who came and paid a sin debt. So that tonight we are made accepted in the beloved. The apostle Paul recognized that grace is what gave him the ability to do what he needed to do as an apostle. And the grace of God is what gives us the ability to do what we need to do as members of the Lord church. Whether it is our calling to preach the gospel or whether it's our duty to, to gather as we have here tonight in what aspect we may feel like I can't do what the Lord would have me to do. I'll tell you, the Lord is the one who's given us the ability to do the things that are pleasing to him. And, and as we look to him, we recognize his grace is sufficient and it is always sufficient. He says this, he says, because I persecuted the church of God, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Isn't that a good statement? <laughs> oh, let us remember that tonight. And that means anything good about us, anything that's right tonight about us. I'm just thankful tonight that we have a desire to be here and the Lord's given that burden in our heart. But let us always remember, it's only by the grace of God that we even have this hunger and this thirst and this desire. Only by the grace of God that we want to praise him. Only by the grace of God can we lift up our voice 
and praise to him. And if it's anything good that's said or done here tonight, it's all by the grace of God. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. I'm thankful for that. He said, but I labored more abundantly than they all. May that be our, may that be our desire tonight, that we will labor as the Lord gives us strength that we would do as the hymn writer said, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey, that we would lean upon him and trust upon him. And I know times can be tough and we don't know what's coming in this world. Most probably it's going to grow worse. And it's going, we know that the things in general are going to go worse and worse. It's going to wax worse and worse. We don't know in the particular instances of our life how it might be with us. But if it does go, go that way, let us know this. God's grace is always sufficient. In the Lord, we have strength. In the Lord, we have all that we need. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Paul said, but I labored more abundantly than they all. And yet to make sure we understood he wasn't bragging, he says, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Paul doesn't leave grace. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Let's not leave grace. He said, therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And so you believed. May the Lord bless us not only to hear it, but to receive it and then to stand it and, and then to continue. And he went on and asked about the resurrection. And oh, how important the doctrine of the resurrection is. He says, now if we pray, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? You know, I've heard some who believe there was no resurrection of the dead. Well, the Bible clearly says that it is. So whatever man says, let God be true and every man a liar. There is a resurrection. Uh, just as sure as Christ rose again, there'll be a resurrection of our bodies. First Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us all about that from verses 13 to verse 18. It tells us about the Lord when he returns and the resurrection that's going to take place. The Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's just as sure as Jesus' resurrection. He tells us that in verse 14. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we believe that, don't we? He says, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Just that sure. Just as sure as Jesus died and rose again, there'll be a resurrection of the body of all of God's children that, are, that have died. And those that are alive, he goes on and tells us, they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he closes with these words, which I'll close with tonight. He says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord richly bless you all with my prayer. and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Elder Oots. We're thankful for the Lord's blessing upon you this evening. Uh, we certainly do appreciate uh, the message that we heard. We ask the Lord to strengthen us that we can keep this in memory. Uh, we can keep the things that we have heard in memory so that we can be saved from uh, discomfort and despair and fear and agony and uh, being forsaken of the Lord. Uh, he's promised not to leave us nor forsake us. Keep that in memory. Uh, keep that in memory in which he has died for your sins. He has cleansed you from every sin. Keep that in your memory as we live here in this world. Um, and what a, you know, that's a condition based upon us. I'm so thankful that that condition of uh, eternal glory is not on us. It was placed upon Christ and Christ succeeded in that. As we've heard tonight, the, the Father sent the Son, and the Son accomplished what the Father sent the Son to do. <laughs> I tell you, I'm thankful for the gospel. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the gospel. I'm thankful for the truth of it. Uh, I suppose I'm thankful for the gospel. I'm, I'm thankful for knowing the gospel, but I'm thankful most of all for that truth of Jesus Christ being the Savior of his people. I'm thankful to believe that I'm one of those from time to time while I live here in this flesh. Truly, 
the preaching of the gospel is foolishness. <laughs> it's foolishness to the world. But to us who believe, it is the power of God unto salvation. <laughs> well, he's just opened up the door for a whole night worth of reading and for tomorrow worth of reading. Uh, when you start thinking about the resurrection, you up on the mountaintop. You on the mountaintop. Uh, you, we're, we're seated right there with, with Christ. So we're thankful for that. Thankful for the prayer. Thankful for the preaching. Thankful for the singing. Uh, Brother Kevin, what number do you have for us this evening? As we close out. That. Brother Eddie, we'll, we'll sing Trust and Obey. It's uh, 398 in the 12th edition. 398. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory he sheds on the way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey for the Amen. Amen. Um, Lord willing, we'll be at Meadow Creek. We pray the Lord's blessing in that meeting. Uh, we mentioned many before the service. Try and remember to be in prayer for those. Uh, remember the things that we've heard this evening. 
Uh, does anyone have any other announcements? Our meeting uh, on Saturday morning at Bethel Washington's meeting. Love to have any and all who could be with that by way of Zoom. And God bless you. Thank you, Elder Oots. Any other announcements? Well, no other announcements. We're going to ask uh, Brother Don if he would close us with prayer. Brother Don, it's good to see you tonight. Pray the Lord's blessings upon you. Good to see you, Brother Eddie, and all of you. God bless you. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank thee, O oh God, for this day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, what we've seen, what we've felt, and what we've heard here this night. Thank you, dear Lord, that you bless Brother Gary to preach unsearchable riches of his kingdom. Lord, we, we believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and I've never heard it preached any better than he preached here tonight. Lord, we thank thee, O oh God, for all our blessings. All down through life, you've been with us, Lord, all our lives. We can never th thank you enough, dear God, what you've done for us. Deliver us from evil. Lead us and guide us and keep us in the way, Lord, that's pleasing in thy sight. Deliver us from the evils of this world and the sins of, the, of Satan and his, and his family. Lord, be with us, guide us, and keep us. And may we meet again soon, Lord, in thy name. These blessings and favors we ask in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Don. Appreciate you. Brother Gary, thank you again. The Lord bless you. We appreciate the message. We appreciate you. Give the Lord. Give the Lord the praise and just always a blessing to be with you, dear ones. And Amen. God bless you. We love you all. <laughs> yeah, I can say the same way. I, I, I love you all of you and I'm so thankful to be able to be on here with you, Brother Eddie. I appreciate it. Yes, I, sir, it is. We're thankful for it. Love you, Brother Don. Appreciate love that. Love you, Brother Gary. Brother Gene, appreciate your prayer so much. And Brother Tim, please take care of yourself, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do, Brother Tim. Thank brother you. Gary, I, I, brother Gary, I really enjoyed that uh, tonight and appreciate the sweet prayers of Brother Don and Brother Gene and Brother Eddie. We appreciate letting us on tonight. And uh, Brother Tim, we hope you get along well. And Sister Mama, I want to say hello to you. Hello, Brother Ned. I love you. <laughs> love you. I love all Thank of you. God, God bless you. God bless you, brother. Thank the Lord for all of you. God bless. Anyways, God bless you. Appreciate the Cheney family singing that hymn I requested. Thank you. Little, <laughs> yeah, little, little, right little, sister, You're little sister Judy. You. Sister Judy Gray likes that hymn, mm -hmm. and, and I knew she was listening. So, um, I uh, and I like it too. So, God bless, God bless you. you. Thank you, Brother Gary. We, God bless you too. Hey, Brother Steve, is your brother doing about the same? Uh, yes, Brother Vance, Brother Eddie. Yeah, he's uh, about the same. He had they haven't got it scheduled yet. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll they'll get it done pretty soon though. I know. Alrighty, we're thinking about it. Brother Steve's younger brother's uh, having some heart issues after his, mm -hmm. he had recovered from COVID, so they're trying to get his heart rhythm. Um, yeah. yeah, it's still. Right. <clears throat> Does he have AFib, Brother Steve? Well, they're not calling it AFib, but uh, it it acts just like it, and they're going to have to do an ablation. So, uh, so it's some I kind of arrhythmia. Some yes. kind of arrhythmia, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a bunch of different kinds. And yeah. I yeah. wish I didn't know as much about that as I do. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but uh, I hope the ablation does as good for him as mine has had. On, I've had one hiccup from it, but overall, it's it's done really well for me. So, yeah, yeah. the shock, the shock, it did it didn't hold. It. Uh, they're, they're not able to keep it. They're trying to do it with medication, but it's still not bringing it down. It did bring it down some, but it's still not bringing it down near near enough. Judge. Yeah. We'll be praying for him. Good night, everybody. We love y'all. You, you too. Good, Good night, night, brother Gary. 
God bless you all. See you Saturday. Lot of Saturday. All right, good. Lord Take care. Good night, everybody. Love you. Love you. Good night.